Welcome to Education Beat. I'm Ann Vasquez, Executive Director at EdSource. This week, the U.S. Surgeon General issued a public health advisory on an emerging mental health crisis among youth. Symptoms of depression and anxiety have doubled during the pandemic. The mounting challenges are particularly steep for students with disabilities and students of color from low-income families. The crisis has placed a bigger spotlight on the role of school counselors. Some of my students have overcome things that I cannot even begin to comprehend, but they open up, they talk to me, they feel listened, they feel understood. Two school counselors in California recently won state and national awards for their work. Both are first-generation college graduates who attended Fresno State. Both grew up in the San Joaquin Valley, where they still work today, and both are from immigrant families. Today, we'll be hearing from the two counselors and talking with the reporters who interviewed them for EdSource. Here is this week's Education Beat with host Zadie Stabley. Alma Lopez grew up in Lathrop, south of Stockton in the Central Valley, with her parents and four siblings. Her parents are immigrants from Mexico. Her mom wasn't able to attend school past second grade. Her dad made it to sixth. So Alma learned about college kind of by accident. She was in middle school. I saw a student that had a Fresno State shirt and I asked him about it and he said, oh, my brother goes to college. And I was like, oh, well, let me look into that. Until then, Alma didn't know what college was, but that shirt made a deep impression. She later earned two degrees from Fresno State and she now works as a middle school counselor herself. And she makes sure that her middle school students know about college. We make some big trips to UC Berkeley, UC Davis, um, you know, University of San Francisco, University of the Pacific. I get my kids out there because I don't want them to just see a T-shirt and wonder. I want them to see themselves and wonder. This is Education Beat, getting to the heart of California schools. I'm Zadie Stavely. This week, what it takes to be an award-winning counselor. Alma Lopez was named the 2021 National Counselor of the Year by the American School Counselor Association. When Alma was in high school, she didn't get any attention from her own school counselor. My high school counselor was someone I saw at a rally once, (laughs) and she was someone who I believe focused on those high-achieving students who were readied for college, and she focused on the students who could have access to scholarships because of their athletic ability or skill. And I imagine she focused on the students who were really struggling in in academically. And I was kind of in the middle. I was this academic middle, which most California students are. Alma did have people who believed in her, though. People who taught her the power of educators, like this one teacher. He would write on my um, papers like, the mighty Alma strikes again. Alma will be in Mensa. And I didn't even know what Mensa was. I had to look it up, you know, and at that time, probably in an encyclopedia, you know. Um, But he really believed in me and he would write these comments, irregardless of the letter grade that I might earn on the assignment. There was always encouragement, you know, with his big red pen, but it was positive. And so I believed it, right? Like, yeah, I, I could probably do that or let me look into that. And so for my students, I try every day to you know, be a believer, be an encourager, um, and then let them know that there are lots of people who want them to be successful. And there are lots of people who can actually help them achieve that success if they're ready for it or when they're ready for it. Now Alma is a middle school counselor in Livingston, not too far from where she grew up. Livingston is a small agricultural city in Merced County. It's known for sweet potatoes. There's also a poultry plant and dairy farms. More than 80% of the students are from low-income immigrant families from Latin America or South Asia. Miss Alma, as her students call her, says it's never too early to talk about college. And she makes sure to give attention to those kids who are not particularly high achieving. Kids who are in the middle, like she was. One of the things that we do is, yes, we take those high achieving kids that are in CJSF, California Scholastic Federation Scholarship Program, on trips. But there's always a few extra bus, a few extra seats on that bus. And what I learned from my predecessor was you find those other kids. 
right? And so I would, I'd go down my list of those kids who were going into, you know, credit recovery program and, I, and I'd invite them. On those trips, Alma says the students are asking on the way, when are we going to get there? But on the way back, the conversation is different. The conversation is, oh, I really liked this place. I could see myself there. The conversation is, I wonder if I went here, could I become an architect? Can I become an engineer? Can I become a teacher? Or what if I want to be a mechanic? Would this be a school that I could go to? Alma also focuses on mental health, and she goes above and beyond. In September, she and her colleagues talked to all 800 middle schoolers about how to reach out to a trusted adult as part of a suicide prevention campaign. About a fourth of the students, 200 kids, said they needed to talk to someone. Alma and her four colleagues had a one-on-one conversation with every single one. During the pandemic, our community was hit pretty hard, and and we had a lot of death that occurred in our community. Uh, My middle school is 800 students, and we had nine primary caregivers that died that we were aware of. And school was not fully in session, so we did not learn probably everything that occurred. There were many, many grandparents um, who died. There were many relatives and then now as we're, you know, back in, in the building and talking to students, we're learning about the incredible losses that our students, our staff, and so definitely um, helping our students through the grieving process is essential. Ms. Alma says she feels privileged to be able to journey with her students through hard things. Some of my students have overcome things that, you know, I cannot even begin to comprehend But they open up, they talk to me, they feel listened, they feel understood, and then they'll say thank you. And every day that I go to work, I truly believe in the power of the educator. And that is from the bus driver to the cafeteria worker to my superintendent and to every teacher in the building. I really believe that each of us has the power to impact the student positively or negatively. And so I try to model that positivity. About an hour south from Livingston, where Alma works, is Fresno, where Yia Lee works at McLean High School. Most students there are low income and a quarter are English learners. 75% are Latino, 16% are Asian. Lee won the Arthur S. Marmaduke High School Counselor Award this year from the California Student Aid Commission for his work helping students apply for college and financial aid. And like Alma, Yia shares a similar background with a lot of his students. Whether they are just English learners or whether their parents just recently came to U.S. or whether they've been here for a while or not, if they're the first in their family to pursue that because Uh, College is scary, right? If you're the first one, if you haven't had anyone that has done that before, then so I understand that feeling. You know, I can relate to, you know, a lot of students who fall into that boat. Yia and his parents are Hmong refugees. His parents are originally from Laos, but after the Vietnam War, they were forced to move to Thailand, where Yia was born. When he was three years old, they immigrated to the United States and settled in Fresno and worked as farmers. Yia is the sixth of eight children. The oldest three were already in high school when the family moved here, and they weren't able to attend college. But Yia has two older sisters who did go to college. One of them is a current nurse right now. The other one is also a nurse, but they kind of paved the way for us. They were the first one to go to Fresno State. They were the first one to get financial aid, which showed us that, hey, it it was possible for us to do that for our family. Still... Yia says he didn't realize all the choices of careers he could have. Growing up, we didn't really get exposed to all the different kinds of careers that are out there, right? So the top ones that always my parents mentioned was either you go in the medical field, you be an engineer, or you be a lawyer. He originally set out to major in electrical engineering, but later decided that wasn't for him. So I had to do a little exploring, and I you know, had to reflect back on what I like to do. So I thought back about it, and I was like, oh, hey, I actually like working with students. He thought back to his experience in high school when he worked in an after-school program, 
and also how much he enjoyed interacting with his nieces, nephews, and younger siblings. I felt that, hey, maybe I could pursue a career that works with kids. So I decided to change my um, my major to psychology. And then I figured, hey, maybe I should do something related to counseling uh, because I like talking to students. I like, you know, trying to make a difference and working with people who come from the same background as I do. Today, as a high school counselor, Ye tries to offer a bigger view of possible careers. He says students often think they need to know what major they want to pursue, and not knowing can discourage them from applying. Another huge part of his job is getting students to apply for financial aid. Ye says it's not mandatory to fill out the FAFSA or the California DREAM Act, but he and his colleagues tell seniors they have to apply. With the uh, cost of living going up, with the pandemic, you know, parents losing their jobs, a lot of students maybe have to go out and work to help support the family. So that's why our district has a really big push on financial aid applications and completions. And uh, we also have a district fund that awards every single high school a couple seniors uh, with their scholarship to help them um, after high school. Sometimes Yia feels he makes a big difference in students' lives. He remembers one student last year, a senior who was Hmong, like him. She was also undocumented. A lot of the undocumented students that I've worked with have mostly been of Latino, Latina descent. So this was kind of my very first Hmong dream student that I've worked with. So she wasn't on my caseload, but she was on, you know, my, my colleague's caseload. And of course she spoke Hmong, so she was kind of, you know, kind of more comfortable, you know, meeting with me, coming to see me. So I, I think that um, when we first met, she just had a fear of, you know, giving her information or applying to college because she was afraid that people might find out and then she might get sent back to wherever that she came from. Ye helped her apply for financial aid and scholarships available to her, and she is now enrolled at Fresno City College. We'll hear from the reporters who interviewed both counselors after this break. EdSource can't do it without your help. As a nonprofit organization, we rely on listeners like you. Between now and December 31st, EdSource has a goal to raise $100,000 to support our storytelling. Make your donation today at edsource.org. This is Education Beat, getting to the heart of California schools. I'm Zadie Stavely. Today, we're talking about two school counselors who won awards for their work. Alma Lopez and Yia Lee. They were interviewed for EdSource by my colleagues Carolyn Jones and Larry Gordon. So uh, nice to have both of you here with me today. One of the things that stood out to me is that both counselors who won these awards are first generation college students and both are from immigrant families. So how did that experience, you know, form them and, and make them better counselors? Well, I think that when parents come and say, here's the obstacles we're facing, or the student says, here's the obstacles we're facing, the counselors can say, I know, I went through those obstacles. You know, I did my best to overcome them. So there's a sort of a certain kind of uh, understanding, simpatico, between the the, the counselor and the students that might not exist otherwise. Yeah, and I know in talking to Ms. Lopez, she was just, you know, very tuned in to what her students' needs are. And she just really went that extra mile to make sure that families were connected with any services they need, whether it's, you know, food or housing or um, help finding jobs. I was going to say something about why I felt that uh, having a good high school counselor is important. You know, when I was in high school, a big urban high school in New Jersey, we basically had no guidance and, you know, my parents didn't go to college. My father didn't finish high school. My mom went to a, a secretarial high school. So there was, I didn't get much outside guidance and just kind of stumbled my way through. So I, I really feel strongly about the importance of my own personal memories. And, and when I see a good counselor, you know, to helping students, it, it, it's really impressive to me. And, you know, obviously these people have gigantic caseloads. And, and, you know, they can't touch everybody's lives, you know, but when they do, it can really make a big difference. Well, wow. Carolyn, do you want to add anything to that? You know what? You mentioned the enormous caseloads. I mean, when Alma Lopez started in Livingston, I think she was the only counselor for 2,500 students. 
And it was interesting to me how she was able to do her job, <laughs> you know, the little workarounds she did and the way she was able to reach those kids. And that's the reason why they, she was named National Counselor of the Year, actually, is because not only was she able to meet with students one on one when they needed help, but she was able to refer them to outside counseling if they needed extra help. And then she did school wide activities and led small groups and trained teachers to do, you know, like activities around kindness and that's anti-bullying stuff, substance abuse. I mean, she just, she just really managed to kind of take the job and scale it. And then over time, she was able to sort of talk the, the school district into using their flexible spending to hire more counselors. And so now there's five serving those 2,500 students. And, and Larry, for Ye Lee, he was recognized for, for really helping more students go to college and, and get financial aid, right? Yeah. And um, one thing that's really important, particularly in the area that where he works, is that there are a lot of people who are immigrants, you know, whether uh, undocumented or, you know, fully legal immigrants. And there remains a lot of suspicion and fear about filling out the forms. That's really important. A lot of the students who probably qualify for state aid for undocumented students don't actually know that they qualify and don't actually apply. Yeah. And, you know, it's one thing to, to maybe read encouragement on a website. And it's another thing to have, uh, you know, a counselor who you've trusted and known for a few years to tell you, believe me, that, that, you know, this is a trustworthy form. What was the most surprising thing that the counselors told you guys? I mean, a lot of people, I think, would have been completely daunted by, you know, having a 2,500 student workload. <laughs> but I was really just blown away at how committed Alma Lopez is to her students. In fact, one story she told me was just, you know, actually got me a little weepy. <laughs> um, I, I interviewed one of her former students who said, you know, in middle school, she was having a really bad time. Um, you know, her grandmother died and then the family had to move suddenly up to Washington. And she just, as an eighth grader, she just felt like her whole world was ending all at once. And she was very shy. And Miss Alma, on her own, went out and collected letters and notes and cards from her classmates saying, you know, we wish you well, good luck. And sort of on the sly presented these cards to this girl before she moved. And she said it made all the difference in the world. And, you know, this girl credits Miss Alma with getting her through a very hard time. And she says, you know, she wouldn't have gone on to college and done, done as well as she had if she hadn't had that support. What about you, Larry? I think the most surprising thing had to do with technology. I was asking him in, in a, a, almost a throwaway question about, you know, what was it like to do, try to do this work on Zoom all the time you know, during the pandemic. And I was surprised. He actually said in a lot of ways it was better that he you know, was able to get students without distractions and you know, was able to schedule things to be able to really have one-on-one -on -one with a, in a student without other things going on in the background. On the other hand, when you're in person and if the student doesn't show up, you know, you just look at their schedule, you march down to history class and pull the student out. Uh, you know, if they, if they don't answer their cell phone or don't answer the Zoom, you know, that's a problem. But he seemed to say that there were some advantages in the remote technology with counseling. What's the biggest lesson that you take from, from these interviews or that you think that school counselors elsewhere and staff and parents listening to this might take from these award-winning counselors? Well, it, it just kind of underscore for me something we've known for a long time is that we need more counselors. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know that there's a lot of money these days going towards funding mental health initiatives in schools, but hiring more counselors is something that really needs to be prioritized. I mean, there's just, you know, a good counseling program just makes a world of difference, especially now, especially with kids dealing with grief and um, all sorts of upheaval related to the pandemic. Yeah, and it's even more so when you're at that level of applying to college and, and applying for financial aid. I mean, all the information is out there on, on the web, but you know, to have a friendly face to actually give you that extra push and encouragement, you know, I think is still super important, even in an age of high tech. I, I particularly think at, at big high schools, you know, and, and with a lot of families who do not have any experience of going to college, it's pretty easy for a kid to get lost in the shuffle. 
and um, you know to, to be able to have somebody to, to pay some extra attention to you you know is, is really important. Well, thank you both so much for talking with me. Thanks, Sadie. Thanks, Sadie. You can read more about both counselors at edsource.org. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Education Beat, Getting to the Heart of California Schools, a production of EdSource. Our producer is Kobe McDonald. Thanks this week to Alma Lopez, Ia Lee, Carolyn Jones, Larry Gordon, and our director, Ann Vasquez. Our theme music is from Blue Dot Sessions. This episode was brought to you by the Silver Giving Foundation and the Stewart Foundation. I'm Zadie Stavely. Join me next week and subscribe so you won't miss an episode.